you mentioned also that both the socialist as well as the communists suffered enormously as a consequence of the collapse of Soviet socialism. And uh, they were also increasingly they moved, I mean socialists more than the, uh, elements from the communist party moved towards accepting or adjusting, uh, cohabiting with neoliberalism. Mm. Uh, simultaneously you also point out that post the crisis 2007-2008 there is another phase of left consolidation that has come about. Would you uh, take us through that? Yes, so uh, the first point is very interesting for me and I try to repeat this uh, as much as I can. So if you look at the Communist Party after 18, 1989, of course they were destroyed. Sometimes they uh, were uh, taken out the political scenario, they were cancelled. And in some cases, at the beginning of the 90s, the social democratic forces, the socialist forces, they gained more strength because some part of these communist parties, they joined this uh, uh, political spectrum, these political parties. But later, and you can see this very clearly in what happened in the past uh, years, this socialist party were also suffered a lot, as you said, by, yeah. by, by neoliberalism, because in the end, by accepting in full sometimes these policies, let me also say that sometimes the ruling classes, because you asked me about this, they also try to use this center-left government, because they knew that one thing is doing uh, a reform, you know, what we what they called reforms, but actually we're talking about counter reforms of uh, social life and social welfare in, Utah, in Europe. One thing is you do this with the uh, right wing uh, government. Think about Berlusconi in Italy, Aznar in Spain, or uh, uh, Chirac or Sarkozy in France. One other thing is that these reforms, which I call counter reforms, are organized by center-left government with a strong tie, still a strong tie with trade unions. So this is sometimes the better way, softer way to introduce almost all the demands of the ruling classes, but without general strikes, without too many conflict in the society. This is what happened. But as a result of this, later, there was a lack of confidence in Socialist Party and Social Democracy, as I said at the beginning of our conversation. And if you look at the map of Europe today, you will find no longer Socialist Parties in Eastern European countries. You will find a dramatic change in Scandinavia, in the north of Europe, where the Social Democratic Party were in government for 50, 60 and 70 years and has been at the opposition of uh, right-wing, very conservative government in the past 10 years, this is also a very big change. This is also a very significant change. Mm -hmm. Even in Scandinavia, even countries like Sweden, for example, there is a big change. And it is also true in, uh, in, in Europe. It is also true when you look at the crisis of uh, the Socialist Party in Greece, completely disappeared. If you look at the crisis of the um, Socialist Party in uh, Spain, where they lost uh, a lot of, uh, uh, a big part of their electorate. If you look at other countries, if you look at the, at the uh, ridiculous change made by the German Social Democratic Party, that is now a Merkel party, you know, so you, could, you could not see any differences. So even if you compare this with the time of Gerhard Schroeder, who was in power for seven years, eight years, uh, th there is a dramatic change. And in the end, following these neoliberal policies, in my opinion, has uh, been uh, a big uh, mistake and then political the reason for the political defeat of Socialist Party. Now I guess you want me to bring back to the other part of the question, the one about the radical left, right? Correct. So what in particular you want me to... No, what is... How is, I mean, given the setback suffered by the left in 1989, 
given that they remain marginalized for so many years, decades or more, how has the radical left tried to re-emerge from the ruins left behind with the collapse of Soviet socialism? And what are the various uh, alternatives that are being tried out? Yeah. So that's a complicated question. I will try to be short. Mm. I will answer to this question uh, in two forms, from two different points. May, may I interrupt? Yeah. The reason I'm posing this question is because of a very interesting uh, reference you have in, in your writings, what you call the plur plural model. Yeah. Uh, so I like you to come to that by track tracking the history of this development in order to realize its, it, it realize its significance today. I will, and this is the, the second point that I wanted to touch, the organizative point, you know, the, the organizational questions of, uh, of the radical uh, left today in Europe. But before going to this point, I have to mention another one that is more political, which is related to the attempt of um, these parties, I'm thinking about uh, the Refoundation Communist Party in Italy, I'm talking about uh, the PCF, the French Communist Party in France, uh, I'm talking about um, Izquierda Unida, the United Left in Spain. In the 90s, between the second part of the 90s and the beginning of uh, the millennium, they all supported sometimes with the presence of a ministry in the government, sometimes just voting the measures, the, the uh, laws in parliament, they all supported center-left government. And uh, this center-left government were not government that were doing uh, progressive political reforms. I'm talking about this kind of socialism, of social democracy that is following the neoliberal agenda in the 90s. So in the end, this participation in this government, this support to this government, has attacked the credibilities of these forces. And if you look at the result of these parties after they joined or after they supported the center-left government, you will see uh, dramatic defeats in this case as well. So you see party like uh, uh, Rifondazione in Italy, for example, that they had 8.5% of the vote or the, the communist in, in Spain. But then after the support to this government, uh, the situation changed dramatically. And still today in some countries, the case of uh, Italy, the country where I was born, for example, the left is still trying to recover um, from uh, this uh, support and in this new complicated political scenario that I try to describe at the beginning of our conversation. Now, in these circumstances, I would say that the model that started with uh, Spain, also with Portugal, if you want, which is this plural model, no? the idea that uh, the Communist Party will try to join and to merge with other organizations of the left, sometimes in one unique political organization, one party, sometimes leaving to the parties their existences, their independence, but going together to the election and having a sort of uh, annual assembly where the political project is debated, discussed, etc. This model that started uh, in this period, you know, with the end of, uh, of the Soviet Union experience, etc., now is the dominant model. So if you look at uh, country per country, the situation of the radical left today, you will find, besides some exceptions, like the Communist Party in Portugal or the Stalinist uh, uh, conservative, I would say, Communist Party in Greece, you will find that country per country there are new formations, new alliances of the radical left that bring together the different forces that existed uh, at the time. The example is uh, the uh, Bloqueo de Esquerda in Portugal, which is now the third force 
the third political force of Portugal, more than 10% of the vote. The example is the Front de Gauche, the left front in France, which now is in crisis again, but was very strong a few years ago. The example is, of course, Syriza in, in Greece and many, many other. In every country, in every European country, literally in every country, now you will see this attempt to merge together the forces of the radical left, sometimes with Trotsky's background, sometimes with uh, a background related to the classical uh, communist parties um, of the 20th century, sometimes also new social movements that brings new uh, contradictions like uh, uh, all the ecological movements that no longer trust in Greens parties, because this Green Party later they said center-left or center-right is the same, mm -hmm. and they s established alliances, they supported conservative government, that the government that had nothing to do, which had nothing to do with uh, ecological policies, etc. So you see this uh, conglomeration of forces, the case of Syriza is the most famous one. Um, and I believe this is the trend that we can take for a uh, dominant trend for, for the coming years. So the plural model, the plural left, as you said. Does this mean that the mon monolithic structure of the parties earlier have now given way to a more democratic uh, uh, organizational form? Uh, which also addresses the issues as a consequence of the collapse of Soviet uh, socialism? It definitely means that uh, the model that we know, the, uh, the democratic centralism, you know, the model of the Communist Party of the 20th century, um, is no longer the reference for the radical left in Europe. Uh, but the question of more democracy, more participation, is not an easy question to answer. And uh, I also don't believe that this uh, essential question can be addressed merely in the political parties. Because the first need for the left today, not only the radical left, I would say the same for social democratic and socialist party, is to change this model, to swift this uh, tendency, this trend of non-participation, of anti-politics. The things that I uh, also mentioned a little bit before. The first problem today is this sentiment, this feeling of being against politics, saying politics is the same, there are no differences, left and right, there is no distinction. This is very strong in the this uh, many new populistic forces that are becoming so strong, so significant in Europe as well as the radical, the, the far-right forces. So this is the first uh, question. Then, if this model is going to bring more participation, I don't know. Take, for example, the case of Syriza. Syriza has been uh, not capable to debate, uh, to discuss uh, the things that happened this summer, the dramatic things that happened in the conflict, uh, with European Union, the crisis of June, July, not even in their party. Imagine outside with, uh, you know, social movements and all the protests that characterized the countries in the, in the past years. So I uh, look in a positive way this change, this pluralistic model, but I don't believe that, um, like many uh, parties and movements say today, um, there are many. Take, for example, the case of the Pirates Party in Sweden, in Germany, that there is this participation of people using the web. Uh, you do one click when you are at home, and then this is the real democracy. To be sincere, being someone that uh, know a little bit, uh, knows a little bit the history of labor movement, well, having a political party, having an organization where millions of people used to meet, used to discuss, used to decide uh, together is something that uh, uh, 
it's utopian today for this kind of uh, um, uh, political uh, groups and parties because we are talking about a different era. We are talking about at least three decades of uh, uh, passive revolution, to use the expression of Antonio Gramsci. And I will not say, I will answer in a, po in a negative way that today there is more participation, there is more democracy than uh, 20, 30 years ago. But this way, the plural model, in my opinion, is the only possible way to merge these forces and to have all these forces not fighting each other, but trying to uh, develop an agenda of, uh, you know, participation, conflict, social conflict, which is the things that we need most. So, if I may answer this uh, uh, question, and perhaps the interview, since I've seen that our time is over, uh, it is important to have a plural model, to have this uh, wide participation of as many forces as possible. But the big question is, once again, the political program of this party is once again the direction in which these parties want to go, is once again the question of uh, a democratic force, a democratic model that sees the participations of dozens of thousands of human beings in this organization and then hopefully millions of people in their country. The question is how we reorganize again, how we rethink again an alternative model to capitalism. So the discrimination points of these parties, of these formations, of these alliances, should be anti-capitalism, should be a very long, complicated path that the radical left has to rebuild again. Uh, Marcello, before we conclude this, I uh, just want to take you back to, answer, uh, to, to link up to your uh, answer right now. In, in, in view of the fact that you also mentioned that there is a rising absenteeism from uh, p people participating in election to, uh, as you mentioned, people's uh, reluctance, I mean, to people, popular perception being that all politics is the same. Uh, to uh, new populist movement and particularly the rise of, uh, of far right or neo fascist movements in Europe. What lessons has the left uh, learned both from the collapse of Soviet, so cap uh, Soviet socialism as well as the uh, mistakes which they committed post that period till the economic crisis of 2000, 2008, and have they, rec have they understood the significance of that? This is a very dangerous question because we could talk about this for hours. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I will just try to say that um, the far-right parties and the far-right uh, movements, ideologies, uh, are those who, has, um, who have taken more advantage of the crisis of 2008. If you look at the political scenario in Europe today, I already mentioned a little bit this in Eastern Europe, but let me mention, for example, the case of Front National, National Front in France. The first parties at the recent regional elections, at the recent municipal election, at the recent European election, something unconceivable a few years ago. Uh, let me take again the example of Scandinavia, where you have um, um, neo-fascist movements. Sometimes it's very interesting to see, because the name of this party had nothing to do with this. You have a party in Sweden, the name is Democratic Party, but this is an organization funded by neo-Nazis movement a couple of decades ago that became became strong today. And now if you look at Norway, if you look at Finland, if you look at Denmark, this party are the second or the third party in the country, sometimes having more than 20% of the votes, sometimes being in the government. So uh, it is a clear example of uh, uh, how much the far right has uh, um, gained uh, in the past years. But you know, also going a little bit beyond the analysis of political parties, which is the core, the focus of our interview today. But also, if you look at the changes in the consciousness of the uh, European population, look at these dramatic events and the response 
that people are giving to the crisis of uh, refugees or the crisis of uh, people who migrated from, from other countries, from Middle East, from Northern Africa, from Africa. So there is a very strong uh, perception of racism in uh, European society because, of course, this is coming at the time of this dramatic economic crisis and changes that I tried to describe in the first part of our conversation. So this is something that we have to keep in mind and uh, it is something very dangerous. We have to see where this is going in the, in the next years. Um, the, first, the, the, the other part of your question... My point is that obviously Whereas they would have been able to capitalize on the on the on the on the fallout of the crisis uh, uh, in Europe, the far right, uh, the the left. Why is it that they have not been able to capitalize on their anti-capitalist politics, which they pursue, which is actually also very necessary, because it, this is also a point you have made it repeatedly in your in your writings that the compromise that the socialist or the left made giving in to the to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, 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 to the capitalist on the one hand or neoliberals on the other well in my opinion as i as i said perhaps too quickly but because this uh, uh, results of the events of uh, 91 of uh, 1989 this was the victory of capitalism over mm -hmm. socialism, even though this uh, so-called uh, uh, socialist model that, in my opinion, has very little to do, you know, yeah. Soviet Union and regimes of the Eastern Europe. This was exactly the victory over socialists, over labor movements. So these forces were literally in a corner at the beginning of the 90s. And in these years, with this new different scenarios, not only political. I mentioned, for example, the trade union. There is also a lack of confidence in the trade unions, but there is also a form of uh, labor that has dramatically changed, as you know very well. Mm -hmm. So it is complicated for the left to rethink, to reorganize, to rebuild, because sometimes you also have to respond to these um, uh, complicated questions try to avoid that uh, this counter reforms in the society will hit even more the, 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 the working class or the, the, the poorest uh, uh, strata of the population. So you think whether or not it's possible to achieve something in this uh, coalition with the center left, which is perhaps what some political parties try to do in the 90s, but there was no way that uh, they got something significant. And on the contrary, they were forced to support some of the measures that they were opposing, that they were strongly opposing before. So it has been a very complicated path, a very different, difficult path. And the other things to consider is that all this is happening under this big umbrella of European Union, this umbrella that is oppressive, that does not allow a country, you know, to break these uh, uh, impositions uh, of the Troika. So it is a very difficult time and the next years will be difficult as well. Thank you, Marcello. It was really a pleasure and thank you for this. Thanks for sparing the time. For the invitation and I hope I will be back soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.